everyone and welcome back to shine like a diamond it is thursday morning here for me and um it might be a couple days later for you depending on when i get around to um getting this on for you so um i decided that i was going to do a um uh story time th on thursday so but instead of just a normal story time paint with me, it's going to be a throwback Thursday. So, um, I've never really been into the throwback Thursdays myself that much, um, like on Facebook or anything. But I love seeing the videos and the, the pictures that people post of, you know, their childhood or even just, you know, a few years back. So... I decided that for my story time on Thursday will be throwback. So I'm going to be telling you guys a story um, that happened to me either, you know, a few years ago, many years ago, just ago, basically, in the past. Um, first, I just want to say real fast um, that I am a mom of two kids and two dogs and a cat and my daughter is homeschooled, so she is home and awake. My dogs are around, so if you can't handle noise in the background, this um, video is not for you. I apologize, but there's just certain things that I cannot control. Um, so my dogs like to bark sometimes when, you know, we live in an apartment complex, so if there is, you know, somebody walking right by our window, they will bark. They just, you know, and honestly, I I don't train that out of them because I want them to bark. I want them to tell me there is somebody there. However, they also should be being quiet when I tell them that's enough. I know. Thank you much. But we're still, you know, they're still dogs. We're still working on that. So anyways, but I just wanted to throw that out there so that, you know, if you're watching the video, you're not getting annoyed thinking oh my gosh she has so much background noise I can't take it so I was sitting here thinking what do I want to talk about what story do I want to tell for the first one and my daughter brought one up that I decided yeah I think I'll go with that because it is a kind of more lighthearted, a little funny to me I don't know if it'll be funny to you but it is sure as heck funny to me because, well, I was there. So, um, uh, so when I was growing up, we would go camping a lot. So I live in, uh, Washington state and we have, so in the Colville mountains, there are a ton of places to go camping. Well, my family usually chose a specific place. Um, it's called Gillette Lake and we would go there pretty much all I mean like 95% of the time um I loved it there it brings I mean we still go um it brings back you know childhood memories for me it's nice because there is um you know there's a lot of people and they have like this kind of cabin thing across the lake so you can rent boats and canoes and paddle boats and all that kind of fun stuff and they also had um I remember as a kid, one of my favorite things was that we would walk or bike over there and get ice cream because, well, when you're camping, you don't really have a place to have ice cream. Now my parents have a trailer, so sometimes they'll bring it. But when I was a kid, that was just one of the fun things that we did. So um, getting on with my story, I was probably, I want to say... In between 10 and 12 um, and we were camping and we would we would go usually for about a week at a time sometimes it was just a weekend depending on you know what my dad um, took off to go so we would do fun things like going huckleberry picking and fishing and hiking and boating and like all that fun stuff so this one day, um, we decide we are going to go fishing, but we're not going to go at the lake we are at. We decide we're going to go to this little, um, like, campground where there's no real bathrooms. Like, it's this, you know, pretty, um, 
kind of deserted actually campground where they're um um sorry my daughter just anyway she said she showed me a sign so I was trying to read it and remember what she's talking about but um anyways so I'm we're up there and we go and I believe the lake was called um black I don't actually I don't remember it wasn't black lake um but anyways it was like this little creek that came through the campground and we had heard from people at our campground that it was a good place to go fishing and so we get there and like I'm not kidding you guys there was nobody there this is the middle of summer the campground we were at was fairly crowded but there is like nobody there and so you know we're like oh great you know we'll have the whole place to ourselves um so we find a place to pull the truck in and we um go off and yep sure enough there's this nice little creek that goes right through the campground and you can go and fish they have these little um there, there's these areas of the creek where it's it pools up and there's quite a big area where the fish like to hang out. So it was actually a really nice place um, to go fishing. Well, we had brought lunch that day and we were gonna stay the day. So we fished through the morning and we're getting ready to go up and find a picnic table in the campground um, to have lunch at. And you know, there is a lot of open picnic tables because nobody is there so um it never dawned on us to maybe why no one would be there but it, we there just wasn't so we go and we find the um table that's you know within walking close walking distance of um the bathroom so me and my dad and my sister my sister's two years older than me her name is andrea um me and andrea and my dad his name is Dave, but you'll never hear me refer him to that, obviously, because he's my dad. You might hear me refer to him, though, as Oompa sometimes, because that's now what my kids call him. So I do refer him to that a lot. But anyway, so me, my sister, and my dad decide we'll go and start setting up lunch. My mom needs to use the bathroom, so she's going over to the outhouse. And we start to set up our lunch. So we're getting in the truck and taking the ice chest over to the table and you know, all's well, and we, we start to sit down, and um, I don't know, honestly, I don't actually remember what my sister went off to do, but she went off to do something. It wasn't go to the bathroom, because my mom was in the outhouse, so she goes off to do whatever, um, and me and my dad are sitting at the table, and she just comes barreling down, I mean, like, running down, her face is white, she is in a full-blown panic, and she's like, there are bears over there, and there's a couple of them. And so, of course, my dad, being, you know, wanting to protect his daughters and family, he, you know, instantly is like, okay, get in the truck. And she's like, they're right there. And uh, me and my dad could not, couldn't see anything at that point, because apparently it was kind of through the trees. So, but we hear rustling around. And so we jump up and my dad practically drags me um, to the truck. I mean, because he's going way faster than I am. He throws us in the truck practically. We get in the truck. Well, my mom, she is still in the outhouse. And um, because this all happened fairly fast. So she was still in the outhouse. And my dad yells something to her about there being black bears so to stay put stay there um until you know he says it's clear so we were getting into the truck and my mom's sitting in the bathroom and um she says she remembers sitting there thinking oh my gosh the bears are gonna come over and like tip me over and eat me <laughs> because she's in this little dinky outhouse and um and so, anyway, so we get in the truck. Well, my dad decides, let's turn it on, drive kind of ar around this loop that the campground was, and go and see if they're still there. Because we were sitting there for just, you know, a little while, um, kind of waiting to see when it was safe to um, get my mom, get our things, and get the heck out of there. 
Um, and so my dad says, okay, well, we're going to drive over and we're going to see what's going on. So he starts to kind of, he drives real slow and we get kind of in the area. And by the way, she had said they were black bears, definitely black bears. So, you know, those of you who don't know anything about, you know, the wilderness or whatever, black bears are usually more scared of you than, you know, you are of them. But if they have babies with them, that is not the case. They will defend their babies to the death. So being that she said there was more than one, that was probably, you know, running through my dad's head that there's probably some babies or something. So we're going really slow, driving over to see, you know, where she saw them, if they were there, what was going on. So we go and we're driving over and all of a sudden... Um, she starts, my sister, she's in the back and she starts screaming. There's, there's a grizzly bear too. There's a grizzly bear too. And my dad kind of, has, he gets this look on his face like, what? And he turns and looks at her. She goes, no dad, I did. I saw, I saw a grizzly bear. It was brown. It was not black, but I also see the black bear. And, um, he's like thinking in his head, that's that's really not possible, kind of, like, why would there be a black bear and a grizzly bear in the same campground, and I don't, honestly, I don't even think grizzly bears were, were, or are around that area, I don't know, um, I don't know that much, but I did know that my dad was like, um, are you sure, and she's like, no dad, I saw it, it was definitely brown, but I saw the black one too, and so he gets this funny look on his face and he starts kind of looking in the direction that she saw them. And as he's looking, he opens his door. And my sister is like in a panic because my dad is now going over to investigate these bears that are apparently in her head. She thought they were fighting like this grizzly bear and black bear. They're fighting to the death and she's just yeah, going, you know, out of her mind. So I'm sitting in the front seat like, what's going on? Why is my dad getting out of the truck? And I was I was younger, so I, you know, I wasn't thinking like, oh, there's no way there's going to be a grizzly and a black bear. But so he starts getting out of the truck and kind of walking over there. And as he's slowly kind of walking over, he didn't go too far from the truck. Um, he's not stupid. And so he... As he's walking over there, we hear this sound. And we're like, okay, definitely there is something there. Um, and then he sees something, and we didn't see it because we were in the truck a little farther away than he was. And then he just starts dying laughing. And <laughs> so, of course, my sister's like, what are you laughing at? And, and he tells us to come. And I, of course, jump out, you know, my dad is, my dad's going to keep me safe. I'm not, you know, I knew something was not right um, with my sister's story. So I jump out and I think at this point, my sister was still in like a, what are you doing? Don't get out of the truck kind of thing. Um, but he goes, no, no, come here. And so he calls me and my sister over. He tells my mom, he yells to her because meanwhile, she's sitting in this outhouse this whole time. Um, he calls to her saying like, everything's okay, come out. And so we are, um, walking to my dad and all of a sudden we hear this moo and I died. I mean, I'm like, that is a cow that there is no bears. There are this herd of cow that are walking through the campground. And for some reason in her head, she saw bears and I mean because I mean who expects a herd of cow to go through a campground that is like this campground like I said in the middle of nowhere there's really no one around nothing around and so when she saw animals she saw bears but so there's this big herd of cow just walking through this campground and um so we were all just like dying. My mom makes her way over there and she's like, are they gone? And, and she sees us just laughing our heads off. And so we tell her, well, uh, good thing she had just went to the bathroom because she was dying. And we 
we all like we made fun of my sister not just to that trip but to this day, when we go, we're in the car together, like my whole rest of my childhood. And now even, if we're in the car together and we pass cows, we're like, watch out, there are bears. And of course, when we were younger, she used to get kind of annoyed about that because, well, she didn't like that we were teasing her. But um, now she thinks it's pretty funny. And But we still joke about it to this day that, there, you know, she thought that these bears were not only there with babies, but now there's a grizzly bear there and they're fighting to the death. And nope, nope, it was just a herd of cows. So, but, you know, in her defense, when you're in the middle of the woods, you don't expect to see a herd of cow and you see something big and black, chances are, and you're also in this where you've been told this is like a wonderful place for um, for fishing, you're going to think it's a bear. I mean, I would have probably said and thought the same thing, probably reacted just as bad, if not worse. But luckily, it was not me, it was her, and so we can make fun of her, and I get to be on that side of things. But um, it was pretty funny. It, you know, that trip was one of those, like, you don't forget when you're a kid, like, you forget a lot of what happens to you as a child, unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on what kind of household you grew up in, I guess. Um, but there are certain things that happen in your life that you won't forget, even when you were... Like, my my daughter was just telling me, she were, she's 10, and she was telling me that this... what Something that she remembered when she was only 3. I mean, she was barely 3. And I'm like, really? You remember that? And she's like, yeah. And it wasn't anything significant. It was just, you know, something that happened to her that she, it was in her mind that, you know, it was, it was significant to her, but to everyone else, not, it wouldn't have been. And so, but she remembered it and she was only barely three. So, you know, like I said, some things you remember and some things you don't, this is something that I will never forget the look on her face as she's running down from this, this spot, um, you know, freaking out that there are bears and then my mom goes on to tell us that you know we sit down and, and we're eating lunch and I think that we were still a little rattled at this point because like obviously we thought that there was a bunch of bears that were going to probably eat eat us if we didn't get to the truck in time and my mom goes on we start eating lunch and she's still my mom is one of those people that if she starts laughing over something she can't stop if it's funny. Like, she'll stop laughing for a second and you'll think, oh, she's done. No, she's not. She will just go. I mean, it can be 20 minutes later and she'll start, just start dying again. And um, I do this too now as I've, you know, gotten a little older. But she cries and just, it's hilarious. But anyways, we're sitting at lunch and she starts in the middle of lunch, just starts dying again. And we're like, what? You know. You know, my sister's like, okay, okay, you know. Um, and she goes on, my mom goes on to tell us that as she's sitting in the outhouse, she's thinking, this bear is going to tip tip this outhouse over and it's going to eat me and I'm going to be eaten and covered in people's waste because she was in a gross outhouse because, well, there was nobody there. There was little people probably taking care of this place because it was so infrequently used um probably as a campground I'm sure more people went to fish like we did than um to camp there but anyways it was pretty darn funny I don't think we ever actually went back to that place to camp or to um uh to fish I don't remember ever going back to that place to fish I uh, and I don't know if it was because of the of the bears or if it was because the fishing hole um, was a little harder to get to because you had to kind of go through the brush and then there was like no shade down there so you were just being beaten on by sun and my sister and dad both um, burned fairly easily. So I don't know, but I do remember that we that we didn't go back there um, to fish again that I, that I can recall. Um, but yeah, so that, that is a story of... Um, of one of my childhood camping experiences and this morning you know so I'm trying to think I'm like yeah I'm gonna have to come up with 
you know, some things that I can talk about and remember. And my daughter just instantly chimes in like, the bear story. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's a good one. That was pretty funny. It, you know, it was one of those things. Like nowadays too, if somebody brings it up, the four of us just die. My grandma, did, even though she wasn't there, she finds it to be pretty darn hilarious too. And she'll, she'll start crying, laughing when we, when we bring it up as well. So yeah, so that's my throwback, um, Thursday story time for you guys. Um, I will be trying to put a story time throwback Thursday out every week. Um, I'm going to try to get this one up to you today. It is the 23rd today. Um, if for some reason things come up and I am not able to, I will start this next week. However, um, I don't see anything really getting in the way of that. My daughter's here today. She's been sick um, with like this kind of cold thing and sore throat. She had a fever the first uh, day that it happened. But um, which to most kids... It, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect them a ton. But when you have diabetes, um, like she does, it does affect her a lot more than just being sick because then it affects her blood sugars and then that also affects how she feels. And so it can be kind of this spin of, of crap. And then I don't get sleep because she's um, having Whoops, and I just spilt my drills, which, yeah, I do that a lot. Um, but, so, yeah, I didn't get a ton of sleep these last couple nights, um, which my doctor just told me the other day uh, that I need to make sure I am sleeping more because my lack of sleep is starting to affect my health and things that some of the health conditions that I already had um, previous you know, that I've had for years, but that definitely are kind of in, inflamed by not getting a lot of sleep. But, um, yeah, like my jerks, if I'm tired, um, they're about 10 times as bad. I get them way more frequent and it, uh, those, they're hard because I always spill my drills. When I used to, um, before I started diamond painting, I used to do paint by numbers a lot because as crafty and artistic as people like to say I am, and you know, you put a tube of frosting in my hands, I can pretty much do whatever you want that cake to be. You put a pencil in my hand and you're lucky to recognize a stick figure that I draw. I'm not, um, I'm just not artistic in that way. So I really liked the paint by numbers because I could I could do these paintings and they would be wonderful and everybody would be so impressed and then I'd be like yeah it's just a paint by number I did not do that by myself but um, when I used to do those and I really enjoyed them and I've done quite a few of them um, I spilt paint a lot and on myself on my clothes on the floor on the table on my kids like I just you know, because not only is it just like a that, sometimes it's a that. And so whatever I have in my hand can be thrown across the room, which I always have to have a cup with a lid and plastic because I, yeah, I've been known to throw that my mom's one time, I literally threw a glass cup of milk across the kitchen and um, I've thrown juice. And I've thrown pop cans and as funny as it kind of is at the time for people to see, for me, it is very um, annoying and it is very, in the gets in the way of what I like to do um, because it does, I mean, I've, ru I've ruined even a couple of paint by numbers because as I was painting like a real little area um, and I'm trying to keep my hands still, I do this. And so then I have to like go through and try to fix my work. So when I found paint my, or when I found um, paint with diamonds, I, and I did one, I was like, oh my gosh, now if I mess up, it doesn't ruin the whole piece and all that work that I just put into it. Now, granted, I, 
you know, have to pick up drills, which I have a lot of little tricks on how to do that, which will be another time, another place. But, um, I, and I also, you know, sometimes have to pick them if I spill them and they go onto an open sticky onto the drill field, then yeah, it's a little annoying to pick them off, but it doesn't ruin the whole project. You know, it doesn't make it so that I have to go and, and try to figure out how to cover up a big splotch um, that that I did myself. So, so that's one of the reasons that I really definitely prefer paint with diamonds over paint by numbers. I, um, and I just love it. And like most of us who have started this craft, it's very addicting. Um, not only addicting to do, but addicting to get new ones, addicting to get other people addicted. I don't know if you have, but I don't know how many people I've told about it and, um, that have started because, you know, I've told about it. One of my good friends who used to live here, she used to be the manager of the complex. I got her hooked on it and I think she might have completed, now she worked full time up until she was not no longer the manager here, which is in another video, but um, she had completed about three of them, but she probably has 20 of them in her stash because she is always finding ones that she wants to do. And now that she's not working full time at the moment, she hopefully will have a chance to do a lot more of those. Maybe I'll even try to get her over here to do a little paint with me, with me. Um, Cause that might be fun. And my daughter might, I might get her to do one of those too. I don't know, we'll see. She's started to get into diamond painting a lot more in the last few weeks. Before she liked it, she did it, um, but it would be, you know, it could be weeks um, between her working on it. Well, I got her a um, Diamond Art Club one, and she has worked on it every single day. I'm just trying to find drills, and, and yeah, it's there's no more in there. Um, but yeah, so she's worked on it every single day, and so I am very happy about that because... Not only is she starting to want to do it, but now she's like, she wants to go and pick her own out. Um, I got her off of the Diamond, Diamond Art Club. I got her the, um, it's one of the newer ones. It came out, um, I want to say about a month ago, maybe. I'm not sure on that, so don't quote me. But um, it's got the uh, fox with the, I know, it's got the fox with wings and someone's holding it and she's standing here next to me. She just started it um, maybe what, two days ago, I think. Two days. So, well, so here's her, her um, art, let me make sure you're in the shot here. Here, so she just started it. So she's got a nice strip going here. And um, if you don't know which one it is, let me bring that down. So it is this one. Um, it's a little hard to see, but I think it's going to turn out super cute. There's like a horse one and a cat bat one like that too. Um, so we'll see if she, but she saw a couple other ones that she was really interested in wanting to get. So um, I might have to do that. And then on top of that, which I will let you go in just a minute. On top of that though, it's a craft. It's a a found for me craft inside of a craft because I then decided I really hate like with a passion these I'm gonna show it to you in just a second let me pull these off with a passion I don't like them I was having problems with them with I have carpal tunnel and it was like holding on to it it's so small and it's so slippery that I just wasn't I just didn't like it and then I was like oh I'll put one of these nice little cushies on there and that'll make all the difference in the world well nope because then it's like slides down like that so then I'm like okay how can I fix that so I put some double-sided tape there so if this is all you have guys um here's a quick trip <laughs> a quick trip a quick tip um, on something you could do if you do have a cushy and it's sliding down and bother bothering you. Wow, I can't talk this morning. Double-sided tape. Put it around 
your thing, put this down over it, and it will hold your squishy in place. Or you can also use super glue, but I tell you, it will change your life. But even then, I still was not thrilled with these, so I decided it can't be that hard to make a pen. Lots of people do and sell them, so, you know, I'm pretty good at figuring these kind of things out. So I went on and I tried, I figured it out. I made myself some new pens. Um, so then I started ordering ones that I could make. And then I also, and actually for a while, I really felt like I have no need for a clay pen. I don't think they would be comfortable. I don't think I would really like them. Well, then I, I saw how many people use them and how many people buy them. And I'm like, man, if everybody else likes them so much, maybe there's something to it. So then I went out and bought a th few things of clay, made a batch of them, and I now am obsessed with them. So here's the one I'm using today. Um, this was this in the second batch that I made, and I love it. One of the things that's nice about these is you can choose your thickness. You can do them... Um, where's yours, Maddie? Okay. I think it was... Oh, is it... Huh. Maybe I... I don't know where it is. I don't know where hers went. But anyways, it hers was... It's quite a bit thinner for her because she's a kid and younger and, you know. So, um, but the nice thing is you can definitely, um decide your thickness and or thinness you can put different um gr grooves into it to make it you know where you can hold it better um so they're kind of cool but i did just order my first acrylic one and i think i'm going to also be addicted to those because i love them they are awesome looking and everybody uses them so they've got to be something to those too I obviously cannot make one of those because I do not have a machine that you use to make those. Um, maybe someday I'll be able to get one. I don't know. But so right now, um, yeah, so to me, it's like a craft within a craft because I've been making, I don't even know how many pens I have, you guys. Not just for my use, but to sell and I give them away quite often. I like to do that. Um, especially when somebody can't afford to buy a nice diamond painting pen for themselves. I like to give back in that way because they didn't cost me much. So people want to pay what it cost me and shipping. And sometimes I've even just done without that if I, if I felt like they won't, you know, they couldn't afford it. But anyways, so guys, that is all I have for you today. But be watching for these Thursday throwback story times. Um, they will be mostly lighthearted and fun, but there, of course, will be some that are a little more on the serious side. Um, so there, you know, you can kind of get to know me um, as we go along through this journey that is called YouTube. So I hope you guys have a great, wonderful day. And don't forget, even if it's cloudy outside, keep on shining yourselves. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.